Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about templates, starting with function templates and sort of understanding just how they work, why we would use them, and again, trying to get our vocabulary with using templates. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, to start us off, I'm going to go ahead and use our favorite website here, CPP Reference, and let's just go ahead and take a look for templates. Now, as we go ahead and search here, we'll again notice there's many different categories of templates. And today we're going to be starting with function templates. Uh, this can be our guide or your guide after this lesson if you'd like to just learn a little bit more about what function templates are. So here are some examples here. And we can go ahead and see just some of the different use cases, different ways to create templates and how to instantiate them. So that's going to be something I want to talk about what actually happens in our compiler when we instantiate the actual template. So I'll leave this here as a guide for now, but let's go ahead and go to the drawing board just to understand a little bit more about our templates here. And to start this off, I'm going to go ahead and give us an example here of code. So what I'm going to do is start creating or crafting some function that I'm interested in. So for example, let's go ahead and create some function here like square. That's going to take in some input and double the output here or square rather, which will do the return of input times input. So computing the square. Now let's say I want to be able to do this on other different types. Well, my option is to perhaps replicate this code and go ahead and make this a float here. And this takes advantage of something known as operator overloading. So this would allow us to work on floats, integers, and so on if we needed to. But what if I wanted this to work on just any sort of generic type? Like what if I had a matrix or a vector or some complex number or some other operations that I want want to define and perform this on. Now, if I know I only want to do these particular operations on things like mathematical uh, built-in types, like integers, shorts, floats, and so on, this is probably a good candidate for using just regular old function overloading. That is specifying different numbers of parameters or return types and just writing out these functions. But if I generically want this to work on any sort of type, this is why we use templates. So let me go ahead and just show you another example back in our CPP reference here, where we can see sort of this distinguishment, because this is something I see when folks are like, well, should I just write out all the types I need or should we use templates? So for example, if you go to the common math functions and if you're computing the absolute value of something, well, this is pretty well defined in the sense of you want to work on integers, long types, maybe long longs, floats, doubles, etc., where we would have these operations. But would you want to take the absolute number of a uh, container data or any other data type? Probably not. So again, that's a little distinguishment between function overloading and using templates. Now, let's go ahead back to our whiteboard and figure out how we can take this square function and turn it into a template. And templates are something that have been around for quite a while here. So just to add a little bit of information here, let me put here that templates have been around since before modern C++, which we often think of as C++11 and later. So templates have been in the language since, uh, well, as far as I know, long, long time, 30 plus years, so pre-98 and so on. So what does a template look like? Well, in order to create one, what we do is we type out template, and then we use the angle brackets, and then we type in type name, and then some name for this type name. By convention, it's usually T, and this is just a convention. Now, I'm going to do a video later on because some of you might have also seen that this is called class sometimes. And for our purposes, for modern C++, C++20, which we're usually compiling on, we can use either type name or class here. It's sort of indistinguishable. But all this is doing is telling us here in our uh, template parameter list 
that we have some type name here. And we might label it T1 or just T if we have one or T2, or maybe provide some more uh, useful names if we need. Okay, so this is the template part. And then what follows after is you can start providing your function here, you know, void or int or whatever after here. Now, by convention, you'll see a lot of programmers, and this is the way that I'm going to do it in the video, just go to the next line so that we can fit everything in here. And let's go ahead and use our square function here and start typing out square just as we have it on our screen on the left here. Now, the difference here of what we're going to do is place our T here where our type was. So everywhere where we want to do a substitution where we had int here or we want this to be consistent, we put in the type name T here. OK, and that's the idea with our template. And I still go ahead and uh, put in the function uh, parameter list. We still need a name here. So again, just to distinguish between that, let me go ahead and put our uh, brackets here. And we just return our input times our input. OK, and again, let me just for clarity, put here is the names. This is our function. And let me move this just a little bit up so it's not uh, right above uh, my head here. Function parameter list. OK, so it's different things here. Now, something else that's maybe worth keeping in mind is just the scope of T, because we often think about the block scope where our curly braces are, for instance, within a function. But with templates, the scope of this T is just within this function where it's used. So we can reuse this name, and that's totally fine. OK, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and make this a template now here and do the same exercise. So template type name or again, I could use class here. Uh, I'll try to use type name and be consistent in most of the videos here and anywhere where we want the type to be parameterized by this template parameter list, we replace it with T. So let's go ahead and save this and compile it. And again, just to show you that this has been around for a while, let's do it with C++ 98 and it still compiles just fine here. OK, so templates are a feature that have been around for some time here. OK, so now that we sort of understand the anatomy of a function template, and this will be similar when we talk about classes and the other types, let's go ahead and uh, instantiate a template. And what exactly do I mean by instantiation of a template? So let's go ahead and just write that term down, instantiation. So again, the job or the point of templates and using them is to get our compiler to generate the functions that we need here. So if I want to use a square with a float type or an int type or maybe some other random type like a vector or you know some other data type, mathematical type that we create, uh, I can have that available, essentially have the overload of this function generated for me as I need it. So what this means here is the creation or maybe even better, just to be clear, the generation of our overloaded function. OK, that's the basic idea or how we can think of it. So if I were just to take this much code here and let me go ahead and just hide my numbers here so I can um, quickly do this in uh, Vim. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just copy this here. And I'm going to use a tool called CPP Insights that's helpful for this. Uh, maybe you saw this in another video just to show what is generated for us. And let's go ahead and just give this a minute. And again, we don't have anything special here. We just have our actual template here. But again, let's go ahead back into our code and let's go ahead and actually use this function here. So I'll just do a uh, C out here and then using our function here. Let's create the square version here and value five. And again, just to show you that this uh, compiles. Let's go ahead and run this here and we'll see that we get the value 25. So again, if I'm going to uh, copy this here, paste it in. And now we'll see that we get a version of our uh, template or to be precise in our language, the instantiated version of the 
integer version of this square function. So we can see the first instantiation here, and we get this uh, generated for us. Now, there are ways to explicitly generate the types that we think we need and even do things with particular versions if we do want to specialize them in some way. And that's something that I'll have to talk about in other lessons when we talk about template specialization, whether it's full specialization or partially specializing it. That'll come in a later lesson. So anyways, this is demonstrating how we instantiate and then use our particular version of this function. Now, again, if I go ahead and use this multiple times and I run this, again, you'll notice we only have one instantiation. We have our function that's available, even though we call it twice. So the template only gets instantiated one time. OK, let's go ahead back to the code here and look at another sort of interesting thing that we can do. And for this, I want to talk about another way syntactically, if you're using a modern version of C++, you can effectively create this template here. So I'm going to go ahead and just create another function here. I'm going to call it void uh, foo2. And this time, I'm just going to provide auto as our type here, input. Uh, and let me just call this square2, just so it's a little bit of a better name. And we'll return, again, input times input. And let's just go ahead and try this function out here, square2. And I'll pass in some value. And let's go ahead and try to uh, compile it here. And oops, just one little uh, syntactic error here. I need to uh, make sure that we return some type here. OK, so this actually compiles here. And this is sort of interesting to look at. And this is a little bit of a more advanced thing to think about here um, in the sense that we're using C20. But I figure that's why you're watching this video series. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and just see what CPP Insights does for us here. So I'm going to go ahead here, copy and paste in this code here. And then let's go ahead and run this here. Now, let's just give it a moment to think. And you're actually going to notice that compilation fails. Because remember that, well, I mentioned this was a C20 feature here. So let's go ahead and upgrade our version and try to rerun this here. So what we get this time here, and we've already used our square function. And I've got our square2 function. But we've got this keyword auto, which in a sense deduces the type for us. And when we use this, we'll actually notice that we get a instantiation of this square2 function from here with the appropriate arguments here, int and int here, which is just how we used this uh, before. And this is just another way that you can sort of use or create templates or you might see in your code. Again, this is the typical way that we're going to be talking about it in this series, as I uh, show here, uh, because it's useful. But in modern C++, uh, in version 20 and beyond, we can just do this. And what this is known as in the help is abbreviated function template. So effectively, by just using the auto keyword, I'm doing the same thing. OK, so for now, this is what I want you to know about function templates, the different ways to create them. This will be our default. And let's just go ahead and review the anatomy here, where we create our template. And we have a template parameter uh, list here. And we can have any number of parameters that we like. And then we have our regular function, where we're taking careful uh, measures to make sure that we put t anywhere where we want that type to be substituted. All right, folks, so with that said, I hope this has been a useful introduction to function templates. Again, it's a really powerful feature. And I hope you also understand the purpose of why we might use them. Again, we typically use templates when we want things to work on any type. And then we have overloading of functions when we know specific types or maybe want to vary the parameters a little bit for a particular function or how it's behaving. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that lesson. And we'll see you in the next one.